Shohei Otani signing such a historic contract with the Dodgers did a lot of things, with one of those things being that it hurt the credibility and reputation of MLB Network insider John Morosi. Friday night was not the greatest of nights for him, considering that all day long, the man was implying that Otani was about to sign with the Blue Jays. He really made everyone feel that way. Tweeting out that Otani was on a plane en route to Toronto, everyone was freaking out until Bob Nightingale, another MLB insider, would report that Otani was not in fact on a plane headed to anywhere, but instead at his home in Southern California. This continued to be confirmed, forcing Morosi to tweet out an apology later that night for his misinformation and false reporting. It only went on to look worse for Morosi, considering that in less than 24 hours after this tweet, Otani signed his record-breaking deal with the Dodgers. So Morosi looks really bad here, obviously, and his reputation and trustworthiness will never be the same again. Or maybe it will go back to what it once was, if the truth and full story ever gets back to us. Because there was indeed a plane heading to Toronto last Friday. All signs pointed toward Morosi. Morosi's inaccurate tweets being true, yet they ended up being completely false information. So what happened? Well, there is a potential reason and explanation that went on behind the scenes that day that is pretty insane. Really quick, I'm trying to get to 140,000 subscribers before 2024, so if you enjoyed the content or are new and haven't hit that button yet, consider doing so. Thank you. So what John Morosi tweeted wasn't accurate, but you gotta wonder what exactly happened here. Morosi and other reporters like him who literally get paid to do this stuff obviously didn't purposefully mislead the internet, and he also obviously didn't just throw a shot in the dark and hope it landed. Especially since he went as far as to say that Otani he was on a plane to Toronto. That's a very specific thing to report, and to be completely wrong on that is interesting. The concept seems pretty simple, right? Otani's either on a plane or not, and if he reported that he was on a plane, he clearly got word from someone very connected with what was going on. And I do believe, or at least really think, that there's a great possibility that that's what happened. And that brings us to this theory, at least attempting to put the pieces together and figure out what the hell happened, and it's pretty crazy to think about. It seems to be that Otani's agency team's intent was actually for misinformation to be spread, to create a bunch of fake reports so they can drive up the price for the contract, so they can drive up the price for the team they ultimately wanted the entire time, the Dodgers. When those reports about Otani's imminent deal with the Blue Jays were flying around on Friday afternoon and evening, I actually didn't even think of the plane thing when I said that, the flying around thing. Anyway, Dodgers executives apparently held meetings that night with a little bit of a worrisome feeling. They even decided that the rumors were probably false, but the rumors still created stress among the Dodgers executives, with one of them even being quoted saying, you just don't know. That's the best way to describe it. We just didn't know. It was not a comfortable feeling. But in reality, again, those rumors were totally untrue, and it all may have been manufactured by Otani's agency team. It's looking more and more as if Otani wanted to sign with the Dodgers this whole time. That's who he preferred and had his mindset on as the best opportunity. And his agency used the Blue Jays to get more money from the Dodgers. In fact, John Heyman yesterday reported that there is a feeling among some people in the Blue Jays organization that they were used. Someone close to Otani, very likely his agency team if that's the case, which is CAA Sports, is thought to have told John Morosi straight up that Otani was on a plane to Toronto and made it really seem like he was about to sign there, when in reality he wasn't on any plane, and there's also an idea that the plane that was being shown to be actively flying to Toronto that day, the flight everyone and their mother was tracking, had a CAA agent on there, basically as a decoy. The same people close to Otani, again, likely his agency team if this is what happened, then told other reporters like Bob Nightingale the truth, that Otani was not on a plane, that he was home, and had not made a decision yet. Even though these rumors were fake, like I just mentioned, the Dodgers themselves started to worry and admitted there was some panic going on. And in the end, the Dodgers ended up signing Otani for the largest guaranteed contract in sports history. None of these talking points about Otani's agency purposely misleading the public to drive up the Dodgers' contract price are confirmed. And I really do wonder if 100% of the truth will come out. I personally do believe at least a good amount of this story is true. Maybe some of it isn't, but the idea of Otani's team manufacturing misinformation and even going as far as to tell reporters to report on fake news to help get more money from the Dodgers kind of adds up when you see how this all played out. It's pretty fascinating and wild to think Otani's agency set up a whole top secret operation. If true, they successfully made people like Morosi and others look like the villain and used other organizations like the Blue Jays to get what they wanted out of another organization, the Dodgers. 
pulling the strings from behind the scenes the entire time. That's some Chancellor Palpatine type stuff. Like I said earlier, John Morosi wouldn't have tweeted out that Shohei Otani was on a plane unless he genuinely believed it and got it from a really trustworthy source who knows what's going on. It couldn't and wouldn't have just been secondhand information, especially not for something that specific. And looking back even earlier, it could make even more sense. Otani and his agency made it clear at the start of the offseason that any team that leaks or reveals that they had a meeting with Shohei will have it held against them. So maybe this plays into it too. They put out that that's what they wanted, only to then leak things themselves in an attempt to just get the best deal they could from the Dodgers in the end. People? The are dead. Oh, oh, how did that happen? Again, we don't completely know what happened on Friday afternoon and evening behind the scenes. We don't completely know what led up to the chaos, and we maybe never will. But I guess everything is fair game when it comes to negotiations. Anything goes, even blatantly lying to reporters and causing misinformation to spread in hopes it helps your client get the most money possible, if that's really what happened. Nothing is confirmed, I'll make that clear again, although I do believe at least some of this stuff is true. Let me know what you think, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.